Rub up your engines! Leon from Saskatchewan up north. I'd love to hear your thoughts on our little convoy here in Canada. Okay, well, I lived for four years, went to school in Toronto, undergraduate school, and I love Canada. You guys taught me how to play hockey. They seem like very nice people, but it seems that you have become what Hunter Thompson, the famous American writers, called a nation of fear. That was his last book that he wrote. He was talking about the United States, but now obviously it fits Canada too. Now, are we all going to get in giant bubbles? like a bubble boy and walk around like those ones you can walk on the water with a bubble. People always get sick. There's all kinds of diseases going out there. I recently had the Omicron virus. It seems to be evolving, but whatever. It's going to be around forever. And eventually people are going to realize, oh, it's going to be around forever. Are we going to hide? like ostriches with our head in the sand all the time. Now, unfortunately, your country, Canada, seems to have taken the ostrich route. I notice when I watch hockey games, hey, over here, Nashville, everybody's screaming and yelling, watching the games. Now you guys don't have any fans again. And the hilarious thing is, all of the players aren't wearing masks, but the coach is. Now, why is the coach wearing a mask? There's no fans there. The players aren't wearing masks. Why is the coach wearing a mask? Why? Because it's symbolic. And basically, your country, with your prime minister, they're protesting because they're tired of all these ridiculous regulations that mean nothing. I watch another one of your Canadians. His name's Jordan Peterson. He's a nice guy, very intelligent, right? And he himself said, okay, I'm against it, but I got vaccinated. So you vaccinated, everything's fine. But now they still got to test me for the virus and I'm supposed to wear a mask. He said, what's the point of having the shot? I kind of agree with the truckers there. I mean, let's get back to normalcy here. Before the coronavirus, every year, Worldwide, hundreds of thousands of people died of the regular flu. And nobody's talked much about that, but you know, here we go. It's become political. Obviously, it's become political in your country, too, where the truckers are going to say, wah, wah, and they're doing the same stuff like they're saying F Trudeau there, their little signs. Although instead of the C, they have a Canadian flag. You're much more conservative and you don't want to hurt people's feelings, right? <laughs> But I kind of agree with him. James South said, Scotty, have you considered a foundation in your name for your money after you're gone? Oh, I don't care about my name. And the foundation's already there. My kids and my grandkids. <laughs> they got to kill their name, you know? They got a college, whatever. That's what I'm into, you know? People that, what'll be when I'm gone? Well, when you're gone, you're gone. And that's the way that it goes. So have a good time while you're here, you know? Don't worry about when you're gone. <laughs> Joe Kerrigan says, are Japanese Subarus better than made than American Subarus? Yes, they are. Truth be said, all Japanese cars made in Japan that I've ever found are better made than their counterparts that are made somewhere else. Also realize, most of the engines and trannies are still made in Japan, and then they just assemble the cars in other countries. So you're still getting a good engine and transmission most of the time. But the Japanese are just prouder of the cars. They have a better labor force. They have a better setup for the whole manufacturing. They take care of their work workers from cradle to grave. And so they don't have to worry about, oh, uh, we're going to pay you less. We're going to lay you off. We're going to fire you. They have a much better social situation there for the workers and they're happier. They go on vacation together. So they do make much better vehicles. It's just the way that it goes. Dimitri says, Scotty, would you recommend a 2015 Highlander XLE with 103,000 miles or a Kia Soul 2020 GT with 18,000 miles for a family with a dog and a kid? Highlanders can run forever. If you're talking about the same price range, I don't care about the mileage difference. I'd get the Highlander hands down. Those things go four or five hundred thousand miles or more. The Kia Soul won't. They fall apart when they get older. Weird looking things anyways. I don't even like the way they look, but mechanically speaking, they get over a hundred thousand. They generally start falling apart. I definitely would go Highlander. Fernie Farn 715 says, Scotty, what do you think of a 2012 Toyota Avalon Limited? I'm thinking about buying one with 150,000 miles. They're excellent vehicles. Now, that's a reasonable amount of miles. Unfortunately, today, with the price of vehicles, people are charging way too much. People are paying it, so you really can't get that much of a deal. They can last an awful long time if they were maintained. But if you have a mechanic like me, check it out. Because about a month ago, I had a guy here in Tennessee. He brought me a Lexus that he bought with 160,000 miles, and he paid like 9,500 bucks for it. The engine was all worn out because they never changed the oil and didn't maintain it. And when I took the spark plugs out, they were coated with burnt oil, meaning the engine was damaged. So definitely have someone pull out the spark plugs, look at them, see if they've all carboned up. And if they are, don't buy the car. That'd mean they never changed the oil and it's worn inside. You guys, Scotty, what do you think of the two liter turbo engine, the Lexus NX? Are they reliable? From my experience, 
variants, they are reliable. Now, I'm not a turbo fan because it will wear the engines out faster, but, and this is a big deal, I have driven two liter ones that weren't turboed and they didn't get out of their own way. My wife, I showed her one, she said, this thing's so slow. Give me back my old V6 Lexus. This thing's horrible. Well, with the turbo, then it's got better acceleration. It won't last as long as a non-turbo. Me, I'd get a six cylinder non-turbo myself, but they're well-made engines. They just won't last as long because they're turbocharged. Shedman says, Scotty, I bought a 2014 Honda Civic in very good condition, but when I turn the AC heater on, there's a disc rotating sound coming from the glove box. What can I do? Okay, first thing you want to do is take the glove box door out. Take the four screws that hold the fan motor in and drop it. Either your motor's worn, and if it is, when you get it out and you grab the squirrel cage fan, it'll rattle and you know time for a new motor, or you might get lucky. Something might have got sucked in there, a penny, a leaf, whatever, and then it will start disc rotating around because it's rubbing. A lot of times it is just something got sucked in the intake and it's in there rubbing, but if you take it out and you grab the fan, that clunk a clunk, or you need a new fan motor. They're very easy to change on that car. It's not hard to do. BS Freak 88 says, Scotty, I have a 2015 Honda Odyssey, 94,000 miles. Should I change the fluid or leave it alone? I would definitely change it. Those have weak transmissions. Make sure you use Honda fluid. Now, what you're going to do is you're just going to drain and fill. Don't flush. And if I were you, I'd do it every 30, 40,000 miles. But it is a Honda. It's not like it was a Chrysler or a GM that if you change it, it might start slipping. The Hondas don't go that way. They're different types of transmissions. But do change it and do use the Honda fluid. Then I'd change it every 30 or 40,000 if I were you because Odysseys have weak transmissions. I would not want to strain them any more than they already are from their design. Andrew Nelson says, Scotty, I'm looking at a 2010 Explorer. Should I go with a V6 or V8? If you can find a V8, buy the V8. Those are great cars. They can run forever. They got stronger engines, stronger transmissions. They're all around better built. The six cylinder ones, the transmissions stink and the engines are kind of underpowered. If you can find a V8 for that, get it. Yeah, you'll get a little bit worse gas mods, but it will last so much longer. I had a customer who wanted 375,000 miles, but it was the V8. I've never seen the sixes go near that far. Jonathan Kazari says, I got an 06 Ford 350. It keeps breaking a flywheel. The engine and tranny mounts are new. What could be the problem? Well, I could tell you right off the bat, the transmission and the motor mounts will not break the flywheel. The flywheel is bolted to the back of the engine, then the transmission slips over it right? Now, if the flywheel keeps breaking, there's only really two things that can do that. If there's something wrong with the torque converter in your automatic transmission and it's wobbling, it'll wobble and yes, it will break the flywheel. And the other one, which is even worse, let's say your engine's crankshaft, the main crankshaft on the bottom, it's worn, the bearings are worn. If they are, are the thrust bearings and it moves back and forth or moves side to side, just a few thousandths of an inch, it'll keep breaking the flywheel. Gotta be one of those two. Pray it's a torque converter. That's a lot cheaper than having to rebuild the whole engine and put a new crankshaft in. In that case, you'd better off just replacing the whole engine. Meanwhile, cool says, Scotty, what's your opinion on putting an OEM Civic Type R turbo on a two liter turbo Accord? Bad idea to mess with a great thing? Yes, the engineers designed it a certain way. You don't want to change it, Just leave it alone. It'd be stupid to do something like that. Honda's excellent engineers, they know what they're doing. And why are you gonna take, well, I'll take it from one vehicle and then I'll put it in this other one. No, you don't want to do that with any kind of modern cars anyway, because there's too many ifs in the software, the hardware. If you could even reprogram them, you might not even be able to get them to run right. I've seen people try stuff like that they never got the car to run right, so no, don't do it. One Bozo9 says, it is advisable to stick to brand name tires. Well, I do for one main reason. You never know where the tires are coming from or who makes it. I've seen so many different tire brands. I've been working on cars for 53 years. It seems like every day I see a brand I've never heard of. You're better to stick to name brands and even though they're name brands, look at the tire because years ago I got fooled. I thought I was buying Japanese tires, right? For my wife's Toyota Crescent. I thought, oh, I'm getting great Japanese tires. I was stupid. I bought them brand name. Then later I looked at them. They're all made in China. They bought a bunch of their tires from China then. So do look. And if it says made in China, don't buy it. They don't make the greatest tires in the world. The ones made here in the United States, Canada, Europe, they're much better. Get a quality name one and make sure it's not made in China. Look at the tire. It says where it's made. It has to by law, in the, at least in the United States. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.